Welcome to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today's video is me reflecting on my first year in YouTube, the things that I've learned and the things that I think you need to know if you are planning on starting a YouTube channel. At the moment, it's very much a hobby and an, a, a creative outlet that I really, really enjoy. Um, and the connections that I have made here and the ability to wax lyrical about handbags twice a week with people from all over the world is um, no regrets at all. I've literally just turned over 2,000 subscribers and to me that is amazing. It's people who are interested in the same thing that I am and potentially we've connected in some way and uh, so for that I'm truly thankful and thanks so much for tuning in a couple of times a week if you're one of those people. Now when you're a new YouTuber and Lily Silk contacts you and says hey are you interested in doing a collaboration you go Wow, I know lots of YouTubers who have huge subscriber bases uh, that work with Lily Silk. This is really interesting. I want you to stick with me for a second because the shirt that I'm actually wearing right now is a Lily Silk shirt. And I picked this shirt um, in collaboration with Lily Silk to share with you today because I wanted to choose something that was me. A lot of the shirts that I see are pieces that people do not wear normally. You will notice from a lot of my videos that I am often wearing white silk uh, and I'm often wearing black silk as well. But silk is a fabric that I really enjoy wearing. As you know my style, it's done but undone. And so you can see here that I'm sticking with that. There is no payment in receipt of this um, space in the video and so I just want to be really up, up front with you about that. I received my goods from Lily Silk a couple of days ago and they came packaged in these beautiful gift boxes. As you can see, when you open the boxes, there is a beautiful piece of tissue and the, both of the products are wrapped up really, really beautifully. Also inside the boxes, there is a small catalogue and the catalogue just provides a bit of information around other products available on the Lily Silk website, which will be linked down below. Now for me, for this collaboration, I was offered a shirt and the shirt that was initially offered really wasn't my style. And so I picked this one. What I really liked about this shirt is the fact that it can be dressy, but it can also be really casual. Now, at the moment, I have the collar open like this, but if I do this up and show you, which is not very me at all, you can see the beautiful pleated detail around the neckline here. So it's quite Victorian style. It's really, really pretty and it was super easy to steam. It also has this kind of tuxedo pleat down one side of the button and the button only comes halfway down the shirt. So it's great for tucking in and keeping it quite blousy like that. Now I am wearing a nude bra and you can just see the top of the cups there. I have tried a couple of bras on and they do show through the white. So you might want to wear a cami if that is a concern for you. Uh, the sleeve detail is just beautiful. So you can see there, there's three buttons, two on the cuff, and this cuff exposed underneath a sweater or a blazer just looks divine. For me though, I know I'll very rarely be wearing the shirt buttoned up like this on its own. If I am wearing the shirt buttoned up like this, it's most likely going to be underneath a sweater or a dress. Now I've got some mod shots here to show you of how I style this shirt. And these are not new ways of me styling clothes because I already have shirts. Um, but this one actually just brings a really nice element with the frill detail. So the first shot that I will show you through is me wearing an Alexander McQueen black cocktail dress with the shirt underneath and a pair of Valentino ankle boots with my Chanel full winter seasonal flap. I think this look is really cute, especially for our upcoming autumn winter. It's very Chanel and it's quite edgy and um, it's a look that I will definitely be rocking. The next one is a summer look, a basic summer look. So with a pair of uh, witchery apricot shorts, got the shirt sleeves rolled up and the collar open and it's a really relaxed style. Uh, silk obviously is quite cool in summer and warm in winter because it has moisture wicking properties and it feels great against your skin. 
and then finally the final look is is just blue jeans uh with my chanel 21p caramel 19 bag and a beautiful calexico belt and i really love a bit of leopard print to spice up a very conservative look otherwise now lily silk also sent me a beautiful silk pillowcase I have been um, well aware of the benefits of silk pillowcases for quite some time. They're great for your hair, particularly if you've got dry or frizzy hair. Your hair just wakes up with you in a much more settled way. Um, in terms of your face, if you go to bed at night with a really nice, clean, cleansed face, you'll wake up with your face not having all of those creases that I usually have when I've had one of those really hard, deep sleeps where I wake up and I've got creases all over the rest of me, but not on my face. Um, in terms of the hypoallergenic qualities of silk, obviously, if you have any skin conditions and you're looking to make sure that you minimize the bacteria on your face, silk is great for that too. You can get 15% off Lily Silk with the code DALE15, which I'll put on the screen here and also in the description box below. Would I buy from Lily Silk? Look, Absolutely. I am actually really impressed with the quality of these of this shirt and the pillowcase. I do have silk shirts and silk pillowcases from other brands and Lily Silk is absolutely comparative to those brands. And with the 15% off, it makes it a much more affordable option. My shirt is the Romance shirt and I will put the link for the shirt and the pillowcase in the description box below. But thanks for bearing with me for my first collaboration with Lily Silk. I have been excited to give it a go and I'm interested to know from you guys what you think below. Being so new to YouTube, I have had a lot of conversations with you guys in particularly on Instagram around starting your own channels. And in fact, a few of you have started your own channels following our conversations. And I'm sure you've been talking to other people, so I am not going to take credit for that on my own. But a few things if you're considering starting your YouTube journey or your YouTube journey is off to a bit of a rocky start or things just aren't flowing for you, I've got a few tips that I want to share with you that will hopefully make life a little bit easier. And I've got my Remarkable here with all my notes on it so that I don't forget anything. Let's start at the things that have worked and then the things that I've learned. Start before you're ready because you will never be ready. You will never be perfect. Your first video is just getting you out there. Your first video is not the thing that people will remember you by. Um, and for me, I think I procrastinated quite a bit on putting my first video out there. Uh, I practiced a couple of times. I watched a few videos and after a few practice runs, I, I bought a bag. That's right. I started with an unboxing. And I think unboxings are a great way to start because you are genuinely super excited about the product that you've purchased. And so if I had a tip, it would be start before you're ready and start with an unboxing because you've already done all the research on this bag usually um, and you're super excited about it. And that's what you need for YouTube, just to be authentic and excited about your purchases. How do you start? Okay, the first thing you need to do to record your video is as long as you have got a late model smartphone, you are going to be fine. Now, I started on an iPhone... 10 or an XS Max um, and I have it on selfie mode when I am working with you and you just have to make sure that you've got the um, mirror mode off so that everything is not in the opposite direction because I have done that before and that's in your iPhone settings. So I'm talking to you on my iPhone um, and I bought a stand, a tablet stand from Big W for $13 or something like that and that's how I originally started. I did not have a speaker and I did not have a lighting kit and that is all I needed. Now let's talk about lighting. I am talking to you today in natural light. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm sitting directly in front of a window. Natural light is probably the most complimentary light and if you can film during the day, it's the best time to film. If you can't film during the day or you're not lucky enough to have a place to film that has good natural light, 
then definitely invest in a ring light or some of those lighting boxes so that you get some light but make sure it's shining at your face not up from the ground because that creates lots of horrible shadows or not from behind you because then you create a bit of a silhouette so lighting is super important and another thing that is important is sound now while we're on the con while we're on the subject of lighting i recently bought this anko lighting kit for 30 dollars at kmart this kit has an adjustable tripod a light ring that has warm light blue light and cool light and it also has a phone holder as well now it is a bit flimsy because for the price what do you expect i'm not getting great quality but this has given me the option to be able to film in the evening hours or as we go into winter when light is not going to be as reliable and you can find these online and i'm sure those of you who shop on amazon can find these online they're called like a selfie lighting kit or something like that one thing I did learn uh, as I progressed through my YouTube journey, however, but you don't need to do this straight away, is sound quality is really important, especially if you live somewhere where you've got high traffic like I do or a lot of peripheral noise. Um, and I did a little bit of research and I purchased this, which is called the Blue Yeti microphone. Now this microphone only picks up noise from directly in front of it so it tends to buff out a lot of noise that is coming from outside of this room which really helps with the sound quality of my videos. But if you have a quiet space and you have good lighting then all you need is a phone and a tripod or some way to keep your phone up to eye level and just look straight down the lens there and uh, that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about editing. I have an Apple MacBook, so I use iMovie. And initially I found it quite clunky, but I watched a few YouTube videos uh, from Justin Brown and uh, I'll link his YouTube channel down below. There are many people who do YouTube videos on YouTube, but I found Justin and just really liked how short and snappy his lessons were. I use iMovie and if I wanted to, I didn't know for a long time what cutaways were and uh, and then I heard people saying, I'm going to put a cutaway in of this bag or this look. It's like, oh, that's what they're called. And so I Googled how to insert cutaways and the instructions were really clear. So you will learn as you go along. You don't need to be inserting music and cutaways and doing fancy edits on things straight away. You just need to start building up your confidence, engaging with people through a camera because that is probably the hardest thing to get over. Now, when you're editing... It is the most brutal feedback that you will ever get in your life. You will be aware of all the ums and ahs, all of the segue comments that you make, all of the weird faces you pull when you're searching for the right words to use. Honestly, um, it it makes you so much more self-aware. And I've actually found the editing process really helpful for my day job, which is a lot of the time speaking in front of groups of people or trying to facilitate conversations with a big bunch of people. So I've actually found YouTube has been great coaching and feedback for me in that regard. So a couple of things that really help you get underway with your YouTube journey. The thing that I really underestimated and I think the thing that was the difference between me and a lot of other people that started YouTube around the same time as I did, they had established Instagram and they had quite a lot of followers on Instagram and they had built up a bit of a profile around their luxury handbags on Instagram. I didn't, I kind of really started when I started YouTube and so um, I found it was a slower start because obviously I didn't have the connections and I couldn't use Instagram as a platform to promote my channel. So you know when you use Instagram and you use a lot of hashtags, then you're able to cover a whole bunch of people who might be interested in certain collections or certain bags or certain colored bags or certain styles of bags. If they see your post and read the description that says you have a video on this bag, then you're more inclined to get traffic from your Instagram page through to your YouTube page. 
Now, one of the things from Justin Brown's um, experience around setting up your actual YouTube page was to make sure that you have a really grubby YouTube banner and he has tutorials on how to create YouTube banners using Canva. So that's C-A-N-V-A, you've probably heard of it, but there are templates for YouTube banners and YouTube thumbnails. And again, he has another video around how to create compelling thumbnails. I used to have a lot of fun putting together my thumbnails in the beginning, but I think you can spend a little bit too much time on them if you're not careful. When you're setting up your YouTube videos, you have options around what you put in the title. And it's a great tip that I've learned recently that you should Google the title and just see how popular that search term is. And that'll give you an indication about whether or not you're going to get many views on your video because people will go into YouTube and search a certain search term and hopefully your video pops up. So um, it's a great way to see if you're going to get hits through random searches by Googling the title of your video. Be really clear in your description about what the video is about and what's included, especially if you're doing reviews, because people want to know, will there be mod shots? Will there be measurements? Will there be comparisons? All sorts of things. Will there be a what fits? All of those sorts of things. Um, and, you know, reminding people to like and subscribe is up to you. I don't like to push subscribing at the beginning of my videos because it is a hobby. I figure people know how to use people know how to use YouTube and so if they like the video and they want to subscribe they will maybe that's a little naive of me but that's just how I am enjoying rolling with it at the moment once you've filmed a video try and release videos on the same day every week at the same time roughly because people tend to tune in like they do to the old television channels so uh, initially I was pretty random and that's because it, I was just playing around and as I started to get more confident and have more to say about things I started to kind of fall into a bit of a, um, a routine and I think the routine is important if you want to build um, your subscriber base and a loyal following. Then you can use your Instagram page to cross-promote your YouTube and vice versa. My Instagram is still really slow, so if you are interested in following me there, please check out Dale's Addiction. And the link will always be on my page and at the end of the video. Now, the reality of YouTube is, uh, in my experience, the first 1,000 subscribers, and I heard Cassie Thorpe in a podcast recently that she did, the first 1,000 subscribers is really, really hard. So if you're just starting out and you're just stepping, stepping toward the first thousand subscribers, I hear you, we've all been there. It is tough, hang tight, don't rush it, especially if it's not your main form of income because at the end of the day, once you get there and you get there by being authentic and not pushing people, then you will have a group of people following your videos that are the right people for your channel. YouTube send you an email and say, congratulations, you've got a thousand subscribers. We're just going to check and see if you have the right amount of watch time to qualify for AdSense. And AdSense is Google's platform where you can sign up to register and Google can run adverts on your YouTube channel and you will receive a very, very small amount of money in return for those ads. Now, I don't have the exact figure on me, but you get paid something like 50 cents for every 1,000 views. Now, that's not much. If you think about my average video before I hit 1,000 subscribers, maybe got 400 or 500 views in the first, I don't know, 30 odd days. Um, that just seemed like it was going to take a long time. But also something magical happens when you hit a thousand subscribers that all of a sudden you seem to have a lot more reach across the YouTube platform and your videos are being suggested more often, apparently. I don't know, I'm not an expert in it and I'm not using the analytics to try and, you know, win the YouTube game. I signed up for AdSense and then it took three and a half weeks here in Australia for me to get a special pin that I had to put in to verify that I was the person registering the AdSense account. 
Then when I registered that, I had to put in my payment details. They send a random amount of money to your nominated bank account within two days and you have to check your account and then go back into AdSense and verify that you received that payment by typing in that particular number. Then what happened to me, and it's relatively new, is that in the US, YouTube and Google were forced to collect tax information from people doing YouTube. And so I couldn't get my first paycheck until I submitted my tax information. Now, not being from the US and being from Australia, I was eligible for some tax treaty arrangement, but I still need to declare tax for YouTube dollars earned now here in Australia. Um, and it's called special profession on my tax form. So nothing is for nothing. So when we're talking about money for my first two months, uh, being a qualified, um, AdSense YouTuber, I made about $395. Uh, so obviously that's before tax and I am going to have to submit a tax return on that. Um, so I'll probably lose at least 30% of that in tax. Unless I have to declare it as a second job, which means I'll lose probably 45% of it in tax. So it is definitely not a money-making scheme by any means. But it does, you know, not too many hobbies will provide you with a return for the time that you spend. They definitely does not cover my luxury purchases. Not at this stage. And finally, given that this video was my first collaboration, collaborations will come earlier than you think. I get a lot of offers both through Instagram and by my email account, um, dalesaddiction at gmail.com from people representing brands asking if I'd be interested in collaborating. A lot of beauty and skincare especially. And the reality is for me uh, that you're not going to really see me here washing my face in front of you and using some kind of beauty tool. That's not really what I do here. I've done a few get ready with me's and that's just a chatty video. It's not um, it's not anything, you know, where I come with any content knowledge. My love is luxury, handbags and accessories. So shoes, jewelry, and I love clothes and fashion as well, as you'll see by a lot of my recent hauls. So it's certainly been an interesting journey for me and the journey will continue. And I have a lot of contacts here in the YouTube community that I bounce things off and how do you do this and how do you do that? I didn't even know how to insert a picture onto an Instagram post. Um, all sorts of things and I'm still learning and uh, it's, you know, I, I love it. I love the whole process and I think you will too if you are watching this video. Um, now is the time to start and if you've got any questions feel free to contact me or write them down in the comments below because i'm sure there as always is a wealth of knowledge through the people who subscribe to this channel or don't subscribe and just watch now if you are one of those people that watch quite regularly and haven't subscribed Thanks very much for the views. Thanks for dropping by and thanks for your comments. I, I really appreciate you too. And I'm sure you have your reasons for not being subscribed to channels um, as we all do. So uh, I'm just here enjoying the luxury love and I hope you are too. So don't forget 15% off Lily Silk using the code DALE15. Tell me if you've got any other tips for budding YouTubers or if you've recently started and you want me to check out your channel, please pop your information in the comments down below. Thanks so much for joining me. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. I'll see you next time. Bye.